we out. What's pop locking, y'all? Big cool boy, the body puppets, West Coast pop lockers. Down here at Cool Boys Boxing Camp and Dance Academy. And this is my YouTube channel where I allow pop lockers to come and express themselves. Talk about what happened, talk about how it went down, and talk about what you gonna do or what you did. You feel me? This is Cool Boys Pop Locking Channel. Let's have some pop lock talk, y'all. Talk your shit. Booyah! On the dance floor. Yeah, what's pop locking, y'all? Welcome to Cool Boys uh, Pop Lock Talk Show, man. Where I have the purpose. The purpose of this show, man, is um, you know, the rappers got the rap industry. Uh, singers, they got the singing industry. Actors got the acting industry. Well, guess what? Us pop lockers and us poppers, we got the pop industry now. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't know what goes on in our circle. So this is where we get together, communicate, we talk, chop it up, and, you know, voice our opinions, state our facts, share our mind, what's on our minds. And um, what I've learned, man, a lot of people don't know what goes on between us. You know, so there's been times, I don't know if this happens to y'all with me, but there's been times where, Burst, somebody has sent me a video of you pop-locking. Or John, yeah, I... somebody has sent a video of you to me, pop locking, like, check this dude out. And I'll be like, man, I know these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? They don't know that we have our world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm doing, homie, is I bring us on our little little our little show and we chop it up and show them that we just as important as the rest of everybody else in this hip hop world. You know what I mean? That's right. So I'm gonna start off, homie. I'm gonna start off by asking y'all a few questions. Um, we can get in deep talk about anything, even if you guys got something on your mind that you want to share. Uh, for those who don't know, that's Bert, the homie Burst Rock from the L.A. Funny Bones crew. Yeah. And John, that's the homie John Bugs. Uh, man, are you you represent Miami and what else? Yeah, I was I was born in Philly, oh. and then I moved, I moved to Miami when I was uh, I did went to Philly, then I went to Baltimore. You know, which is another rough city. <laughs> and then I moved to Miami when I was about 12 years old. And then that's kind of like where I, where I feel like I'm from. Because that's where I became the artist I became. That's where I really fell in love with the craft, like, you know, on, on a real high level. So that's why I always say I rep Miami because the other spots were, you know, places I was living. But when I moved to Miami, the culture and the influence is what really made me uh, fall in love with popping or whatever. So, so, so John Bulls, how old are you now? I'm 34. Okay, so 30. what year you start getting down? I started getting down in 99, 2000. 99, 2000, yeah. 99, 2000. Okay, mm -hmm. who inspired you to bust on me? Man, to keep it real, it was just motherfuckers in the neighborhood at the time. You know, it was just a thing that everybody did. You know, like we had the little boys and girls clubs and motherfuckers with who? Everybody's either there. Philly? Yeah, uh, I'm talking about, uh, it, yeah, in Philly, in Philly. Okay. Everybody go there and who? So in 99, they was busting in Philly already. Yeah, and in, and in Baltimore, and in Baltimore. Okay. Yeah, and in Baltimore. And I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club, and there was a couple homies that lived around the way, Raheem, Corey, this dude named Bobby Digital. And they were like the, the hardest poppers at the time said, in the neighborhood. Bobby Digital. Yeah, Bobby Digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All he, them he, dudes still alive? Yeah, all them dudes still alive. Corey went to the military. Bobby got a family. I don't know where Raheem is. Raheem got into some street shit, so I, I don't know what he's doing right now. So what but, did y'all uh, call it out there at that time? Everybody called it popping. Okay. Everybody okay. called it popping. Everybody called it popping. And and I remember, you know, going to the boys and girls club, seeing Raheem do it, and just the reaction he was getting from. The hood motherfuckers, but also the girls, you know what I mean? It was just like he was like a hood star, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody knew he was tight. And so I was like, shit, I, I got to learn how to do this thing. And then so I started getting into it, falling in love with it. And then I'll never forget, Corey uh, gave me a tape of um, Wiggles, you know what I mean? I'm like, who's Mr. Wiggles? You know what I'm saying? He like, man, you got to see this dude named Mr. Wiggles. He's he hard. He hard. So he popping the tape. And what's funny is like I was so naive back then. I'm like, he's all right, because he was only <laughs> he was like because he was only tutting in the tape. Yeah. But I didn't know that it was his tutting tape. Like Wiggles puts out right, right. tapes with 
okay, I'm touching my animation tape, my waving tape, my floats and glides tape. Like, so at that time, I he was just touching. I'm like, it's tight. And then at the end, he had a bonus footage for his next VHS tape, which was yeah. the ground moves. And that's when I was like, oh, who is this dude? You yeah. know what I mean? And he starts shooting out names like Skeeter Rabbit and Mr. Animation and certain people that I didn't really know of. But I'm like, if he's shotting these dudes out, then whoever he's talking about got to be cold. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't have no computer at my house. So I had to go to the library to look to look stuff up, you know, and I went and looked up some of these dudes. And then it just took me down a rabbit hole of trying to learn the history and learn who, what, where, when, why. And that's how I stumbled across shrimp and taco and animation and electric boogaloos and you know etc 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 you know this out, man. you moved to california from there right no you, mm -hmm. went to, you went to miami you went to florida yeah is this true or not correct me if i'm wrong homie is it because of this dance that made you move to cali 100 percent. 100 percent. that's dope. 100%. there's no other reason you know and it was uh you know, I, I I was throwing popping battles in Miami. I, I created a decent little reputation for myself. I was making enough money out there. I was very comfortable. But like, I don't know, I just always wanted to go to L.A. because one, it was the mecca of it. You know what I'm saying? And then also just the opportunities to to succeed. You know, in, in, in Miami, we at the bottom, bottom, bottom of the map. You know what I'm saying? So it's just it's not much going on down there, you know. So, uh, so was y'all getting, with y'all being in the South, was it was it close to like techno music you guys was busting to? Uh, electro. It was electro. like a lot of electro. A lot of electro, uh, you know, drum and bass. I mean, here's the crazy part is like, when you went to the skate rink, that's where you got funk and electro music. You know what I'm saying? But then when okay. you went to the club, Motherfuckers is bumping like JT well, wait Money. Minute, wait, a wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, homie. Wait a minute. You can roller skate too? Yeah, I can skate. What? Yeah. You can skate? <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not crazy with it, but I, I can skate. You, when you come down here to my studio, you gotta bring your roller skates, homie. You yeah, know, we you gotta say you know down here we uh we custom we custom make skates. Yeah, my homie Tony Turbo, buddy of my crew, he custom makes skates. He be Tony making, he be Tony taking like Jordan, yeah, Jordans yeah. and like custom making them and all that junk. Yeah, we skate. Let me ask you a question, homie. Yeah. When is the first time you saw the homie Burst Rock from the LA Funny Bones crew? Ooh. <laughs> and tell me what that experience was like. I mean, was he still I, in a was he still in a car? Was he robbing something? I mean, what was what did you? I didn't have to ask, you didn't have to be pop you know, I what think it, I think it was. I, I can't fully remember, but when I first got there, hold up, OG Flat Top is in the building with us, y'all. We got We got to show. We got to show the legend some love. Flat Top, Flat what Top, Flat Top. You and your you and your Maybach. You and your Maybach. <laughs> you got to turn this mic up, Flat Top. You got to turn your mic on, man. Why he turning his mic up? John Bush, so tell, me, tell me your experience when you first saw Okay, is that better? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we yeah, got we, you. All right, cool. We got yeah, you. Cool, cool, cool. We got, we got cool, John cool, cool. Boogs. We got John Boogs with us. And we got the what's, homie. Uh, what's up, first John? Mark. What's up, man? What's up, y'all? <laughs> what's up, y'all? What's up? What's up, Latop? I think when yeah, I saw man, first... Man. I think the first... When I first moved to L.A., I was getting down a lot with Frantic. And, and and devious in them so i knew i think i met burst through frantic you know what i mean i don't remember where because it was so long ago but i obviously i remember him and tronic were in funny bones and frantic was in funny bones and i think it might have been out of some sort of festival or some sort of get down or something and then when i saw burst like i kind of made sense because i was like oh okay like Funny Bones has like a particular style, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like they all dance different, but you know what I'm saying? Like, there's like to me, like you can almost tell when somebody's in Funny Bones. I can't explain. It's almost like you can tell when somebody's underneath the Electric Boogaloo camp. You know what I'm saying? You could just tell by the way they kind of approach it. You know what I'm saying? And like when I saw Burst, it was almost like I felt like I was seeing the the i don't know you know what i mean like the the leader of it in a way to some degree you know what i'm saying because i felt like oh, okay now i get it you know what i'm saying because tronic frantic 
devious. They all have a certain particular approach because I think their influences are similar. You know what I'm saying? And I know Burst was one of Frantic's influences. Okay. So, so, so I, th off, I think. Can you recall yeah. the first time you saw John Boogs? Uh, I can't recall the first time I saw him, but I remember when I started seeing John Boogs around. I don't remember exactly where it was, but it definitely was around the time when he was getting down with Devious and, and Frantic, and he was out there in the valley and um, battles. Um, and when I first seen John Boogs, I thought, that motherfucker was nasty because he just got a wild style. You know what I'm saying? He's just like, wow, 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 wow. You know what I'm saying? He, so he definitely stood out the first time I met him, dog. And ever since I met him, he's always been cool as shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Very aggressive dancer. That's what I like. Very <laughs> aggressive. So, you know what I'm saying? I like aggressive shit. Okay, you know? Okay, okay, okay. Verse Rock, can you remember and recall when you first saw Flat Top? First time I seen Flat Top, I want to say it was like at a Universal <laughs> City Walk or something. <laughs> I want to say it was like at a City I'll Walk. Down. You know, I had already heard of Flat Top. But uh, I want to say the first time I actually experienced them getting down was at, at City Walk. Man, I think Flat Top, man, low key on a percentage of City Walk, man. You know, if you got a, you know, when you know somebody got a couple of dollars on him, you know, you're going to hit him up for some change, right? So I think yeah. Flat Top, okay. like, he keep keeping it on the low. He don't want us chipping in. <laughs> he don't want us pulling this, you know. I'm closing in on a couple of things, but you know. I'm closing in a few things, but it's uh, I tell you, it's like what I what I always known about you, Devious. You was always real quiet, and you don't all you don't you can't no, tell. Wait, 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 get I'm, out. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not first. Rewind, rewind, <laughs> click, rewind. Let me rewind that shit. Just that what it rewind, but my bad. Okay, but what I'm saying is what I've noticed about you always. You was always real quiet, and they didn't necessarily know what you was going to do. And if they didn't know who you were, they found out after their ass was on the menu. <laughs> and then you go to chopping them up. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, this I'm like, this motherfucker is bad. I said, uh oh, I got to get back to practicing. I'm like, because it's a lot of, a lot of, the thing about Funny Bones crew, they have a, Kind of like what John Buzz was saying. They have a way of hitting that's distinct, but everybody's different. Yeah. It's it's particular. It's a particular kind of hit. A particular kind of tit. That's I what mean, John uh, said. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's particular. But and it, when they get down, it's like they're different, but they're the same. First of all, did you know you guys were viewed like that? Well, um. I knew we were viewed as uh, different, you know what I'm saying? Because we don't really have a, a certain style that everybody has. And I, the way we carry ourselves and everything, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's definitely different. Uh, but the, the way they're breaking it down, I I wasn't, I didn't think about it that way. You you know who is the epitome of y'all crew of being different? Who? Warlock. Oh, yeah, Warlock's yes. super different. Yes. Warlock. Warlock. Wow, that's, probably, that's probably who they're talking about. That's probably who they're seeing. I've done a lot and of like shows. Warlock I, don't hesitate to bust. He will come yeah. out and bust. Yeah. No, I've done a lot of shows yeah. with Warlock. Me and Warlock worked uh, with this group called Substance Over Hype. We did a bunch of shows at the House of Blues and stuff like that. So it's like, I've always been around Funny Bones members, whether it's battling them or performing with them or Whatever, so I kind of you kind of know it when you see it. Everybody's their own individual, but you just know it when you see it. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're like, oh, okay, I, I know they come from that particular camp because it's it's just you can't really explain it. It's just like a approach to the dance that you can see is like. And funny. first, first, uh, allow me to uh, uh, excuse me and correct myself for calling you that because. You know, everybody don't wear their name on their head like me. So, so <laughs> you know what I mean. So, my bad. I, I know I want to just I want to check myself on that because I like to show respect with with somebody bad like you. Because sometimes people don't realize how bad you are until you start tearing people up. I saw now. Check this out, y'all. I saw um, what's his name Gizmo go after um, what's his name? It's right on the tip of my tongue. Um, uh, uh, damn, it's too. No, no, no. He tried to go over, go after Playboy Eddie too, which was not a good idea because Playboy Eddie is like that too. He was like, "Oh, I'm not really doing nothing." Playboy Eddie, he tore his ass up. Seymour, he tried to go after Seymour. Do you know who Seymour is? 
I know I, Seymour. I, I know Seymour. You guys remember that? I don't know. It was at a Papa's picnic. It was at a Papa's picnic. And it's not that Gizmo's not talking tight. about Johnny Five. That's when I think uh, Johnny Five and Gizmo had a little issue at a Papa's picnic. Is that one? No, they had an argument. They was ready to fight. That was I, yeah. I was there too. But oh, okay. get, but Gizmo went after. Okay, um, Seymour. He does a lot of shows on uh, cruise ships with another guy. It was Alan Seymour. Sometimes and he used to perform down there at Venice Beach with us. They had a they had a uh, thing they used to do down there. They was making money had over fist. But Seymour does flips and he can pop. And when he went after him, I was like, uh, you might not know who he is, but this dude has been getting down forever. And it's like, I'll just let you see. And But I ain't mad at Gizmo because Gizmo has gotten better when, at your uh, event, uh, Cool Boy. At your event, I was checking out Gizmo. I'm like, damn, that's not the Gizmo I remember. He tightened up. He tightened up a hey, lot. Hey, if y'all don't mind, man, I'm a, I want to share a little bit with all three of you about what I encountered. I'm going to start with John Bugs. So I don't know if it was 2009, 2010, 11, around that, around that time, I threw a pop lock in battle at IDA. I used to throw those pop lock in battles at International Dance Academy in Hollywood. John Boog showed up. Now, honestly, this was my first time meeting him, but honestly, I thought he was a boogalore because of the name John Boogs. So mm -hmm. when he entered the group, when he entered the battle, I was like, man, who is this boogaloo cat? You know what I'm saying? So when the, when the battle went down, he started guillotining everybody. Shaka, you out. Shaka, you out. Shaka, he was taking everybody down. I said, look at this cat here. But come mm -hmm. to find out, come to find out it had nothing to do with boogaloo. And it was just a John Bugs. That was his name. And he uh, he actually won. He actually won that pop locking battle. Uh, Bugs, you remember that, don't you? I do remember that. It was it was Bop and Andre was judging. Uh, oh my gosh, what's Mr. Ree? Mr. Ree, um, and then uh, man, I forget the oh, plick, uh, no, it, was it, was, it wasn't plick, plick plock. Yeah, it was plick plock from the Bay. Yeah, so that yeah, that was. I wanted to just come through and support because I was like, you know, there's certain energies I connected to in LA that I thought was a little bit more authentic. So I always was like, cool boy just seemed like a real motherfucker. You know what I mean? So if he throwing an event, I, I want to pull up, you know what I'm saying? And just, and just experience it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so man, yeah, you that, still got your trophy? I do. I do. I got, I, I don't, it's somewhere in my, look uh, it, look, look. <laughs> this collection of trophies. It's somewhere with this collection of trophies. <laughs> nah, to be honest, man, to wow. keep it a buck, to keep it a buck, man. Like for me, it was like coming to L.A., you know, and this is just my roots in history. You know, some of the dudes I rock with, the pop tarts and certain people that I, I, I've been rolling with for a long time is like I take pride coming from the South because a lot of, you know, African-Americans were living in the South before they migrated to the West, up north, different places. So I feel like there's something special about being from the soil where I'm from. And then coming to the West, you know, I, I I think reason why I burst was like, yo, he's aggressive. It was like, it was, it. I really wanted people to understand, like, don't get me wrong. I, I respect it comes from the West. It's pioneered in the West. But at the same time, there's people all over now that's, that's doing it and they're doing it at a high level. And sometimes it felt like you just had to go harder to really make sure you were heard. And now I don't feel that's as necessary because you know you let your skills talk you know but back then i was just trying to really prove something and ultimately just trying to like prove that like yo i can get out with the best of them you know what i'm saying and, and and so that was my energy when i came to your battle that's my energy whenever burst rock seen me and it, it took me, me a it showed homie it showed oh, yeah. <laughs> it showed hey, yeah. now what thing one thing i excuse me one thing i noticed about books he had a, he still has a distinct way he hits. It's um, it's hard, but at the same time, it's contained. Like he not he not hitting it all right then, but he hitting hard. Like for an example, he'll pick he'll hit fifty pounds, but sometimes he'll hit ninety pounds, and sometimes he'll hit one hundred and fifty by the way he hit. 
And I, yeah, it's a trip. That's what I've been able to see. Flat top, I That's what I've been able to see. What, what I admire about him is what you said that was really important is contained because the dude dances, John Boog danced 100 miles per hour. To, con- right. to stay contained going at that speed is incredible. You but know who used to do that other than him? It's one other cat. Uh, he, uh, he does music now. No, Adam, no, Adam Mason definitely did. I'm talking about uh, Beast Slayer. Legend. Oh, Beast Slayer. Yeah. yeah. You want to know something funny? You ready, for this? you ready for this? That's funny you say that. I just talked to Legend the other day. And the reason why I like Legend, and this is to this day why I think it's awesome, all, all of us poppers and pop lockers on this conversation right now, is like, see, me being from the South, I never had a um, a uh, a discrimination against any style. You know what I'm saying? It was like, I wanted to learn how to boogaloo. I wanted to learn how to animate. I wanted to learn how to wave. I remember like some of the first waving stuff I looked up. I saw some stuff with uh, Dollar Bill and No Bone Tyrone. And this is back in like 99. You know, I was looking up, the, you know, the Pomona motherfuckers. And then like also watching Electric Boogaloo. So like I always wanted to blend things. And the reason why I used to like Legend so much when I first came up, because I felt like he had the electricity of animation, but he had the funk of of of, of like a boogaloo approach. And he, he married him very well and i think that's what made him stand out back then so he's actually one of my favorite and i told him to his face like he actually inspired me when i was coming up and so it's funny you say that because like i was looking at him when i was young that you told him that Uh, yeah that you told him that john bugs a lot of people don't give people credit and props like that on me nah nah man i mean everybody you know what i'm saying yeah you got to man it it doesn't tell somebody that you admire him and let me go into uh, Burst Rock, man, from the first time. I don't know if this was the same day for him as it was for me, but um, we were at, and it was during the daytime. I forgot why the event was during the day. How the West was, how the West was one. Before then. For it was me, before then? It was at, uh, what's that in Long Beach where they get out every Monday night? Home- Homeland. Okay. Homeland. But for some reason, we was up there, not at nighttime, we was up there during the day. And a cypher jumped off. And you got out. And see, to me, homie, image means a lot to me. So how you dress, how you look, and what yeah. you represent. And when I saw Burst for the first time, and I seen he come out, and he took his time, and he had this little cholo, this whole little cholo <laughs> skin. He took the chain, and he whipped it like that. I was telling my homies, I said, look at that. I said, homie. I was going crazy, right? Because he had his own get down. Representing his own shit, and I can tell it was him. You get what I'm saying? Don't ever lose that style. Ever. And matter of yeah. fact, don't I ever lose that style. I walked up to you that day, and you told me, "Hey, I like your style," which I thought was dope. I said, "Oh, okay, that was cool." And then now with Flat Top, this is not the first time I met you, but this is a moment that I really admire and I respect. You was at uh, City Walk, getting down. And I have my homies with me and some of my little younger homies with me. He stopped and he had a, hundreds of people around him like he normally do. He stopped in the middle of the show because he acknowledged me, told me to come out and bring your homies too to get out on his set. I don't know if you remember that or not, Flat Top. I do. I do, I do remember it. Yes, I do. That was see, a long, see, long time ago, like- homie. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's back when my flat top was shorter. Right. <laughs> no, it wasn't right. just long as fuck now. But I'm going to tell you, the thing about that is when you got skills like you, because see, some people have skills. We we're, we have different skills in different ways. It's like different. It's just like different colors that shine and do different things, like different powers. The way you navigate people, cool boy. And the way you organize people, that's some general shit. People don't get that. The way you're able to pull people together, even the boxing camp, that's some general shit. So salute to you, dog. Oh, yeah. And I mean that. And Burst, the way you, you're like a quiet leader that don't nobody know until they find it the last minute. You send all these other leaders up there and they won't even know it's you. <laughs> and tell you, and tell you want them to know it's you and yeah, bugs, yeah. bugs. I'm telling you, you doing your thing. You making it happen. 
I, I saw him downtown. He was doing an event. And he had on some of his own clothes. And I thought that was like, he's this guy's doing what it's supposed to be. He's and remember what, you remember when I saw you? Yeah. Downtown yeah, was that, yeah, you, the had, you had your own, yeah, you had your own clothes on. Mm -hmm. His design, his design. It was magnificent. And he was doing um they were doing a big event downtown. They had like a um they had a whole theater and everything. And then from there, I think I saw you recently, you was uh on a, on an award show. What award show was that? Yeah, the Swiss Beats, man. He's a good friend of mine. DMX, when he passed away, he asked me to come do a... He asked me to come pop on stage in honor of DMX, you know, at the BET well, Awards. Yeah. He a motherfucking dance star. Did you hear what he said? Who his homie is? Did you hear him? He said it like what? Yeah, Swiss Beats, that's the homie and shit. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but cool boy, all jokes I aside, with Swiss Beats. Yeah. I got down with Beats. Well, I'm in this video, the guilty video. Yeah. yeah. That's me doing all the all the footwork. I'm in the video dancing with them. Oh shit. I did the DreamWorks when when he got signed to DreamWorks. I did his uh I did his open showcase. You know what I mean? To, to be honest, Swiss Beats Camp owe me some money. So <laughs> oh, he's telling the holler oh, at me. Oh, oh he goes wow. <laughs> Okay. Yo, <laughs> he need to pay you to Tell him again, hey. he need to if you want, Yo, Swiss Beats, not, not Swiss Beats, hey, not Swiss Beats himself, his camp. But the camp are you can see. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because they offered Damn me, hey, look, hey, this is a true story. You guys remember uh, uh, Mac 10 came out with a video, and there was, uh, I want to say Legend was in the middle popping, and the lowriders were hopping. The lowriders. Were hopping. You guys seen that video, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they offered me a thousand dollars not to do that video because Mac Ten's manager wanted me in that video. So his camp, Swiss Beats' his camp, called me and they said, "Yo, so and so wants to get a hold of you, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna offer you this money so you don't do the video because Mac Ten's video is gonna drop before our video drops, and we don't want to make it look like we we copied them." Oh. So I was like, "I thought I thought we was homies. Like, all right, hell yeah, I got you guys. All love, don't trip. You know what I'm saying?" Mm -hmm. And uh, sure enough, when it came down, but see, where I fucked up is I didn't have my agent take care of that, you know what I'm saying, like I should have. Yeah. Agent on top of all that. But I, th I thought we was homies. You know what I'm but saying? But see, it's, it's still I character it's of a man. We're still a man. Yeah, yeah. We're still a man. They're supposed to do you right. The boomerang is flying. Don't nobody yeah. escape nothing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right. So anyways, I never, I never seen that check. But I seen the Mac Ten video. I was like, "Fuck! I should have been a part of that shit. That yeah. shit was bad as fuck." It was, you know. Yeah. Like it, though. That, that's, one, that's one of those things I had to learn growing up. You feel me? Hey, yeah. Like years ago. What's that? What's that? What year did you first start getting down? Oh wow! I know. Serious. I, I, I got I, here. Just a <laughs> little while. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I, I actually. I came here from Detroit, and I've been out here. I got out here in 83. My mother demanded I go back home. I went home for a couple months and came back, and I've been here ever since. I started dancing, going to Venice. I went to Venice. I was working at a pizza parlor. I went down to Venice. I saw, um, I saw the freak the free daddies was down there dancing. And, um, and I'm out there dancing, doing my thing, and then one day I just uh, decided to try it by myself, right? And got a got a big crowd, and they broke bread real well. I was like, I don't think I. And so I quit the, the pizza job. I quit. I said I'm quitting. I ain't working here no more. Went down there that same weekend. The most I ever, the most traumatizing, wonderful thing that happened to me when I first got out of here, I borrowed somebody's stereo. Back when they used to have batteries, ten batteries in it. I borrowed a stereo, kept a stereo for about an hour, made seven hundred dollars an hour, gave them. Yeah. New batteries, gave him 20 bucks for some more batteries. And he looked, he stood there watching me do it. I couldn't believe it either. But then, you know, that just let me know that you got to lean on what God gave you. So, you started, so I've been getting out of it. You doing those type of deaths out there on the boardwalk in 83? I started, I started late 83, or 84, because I was here. My mother told me to come back home. So I had to go back home for a couple months because I'm, her, I'm the youngest son. So... I came back in 84 and stayed. And when I got out there in 84, I was no holes barred. Okay, look. And don't let me mess the story up. But you said you saw the freak daddies first. 
So is that where you picked it up at? No, man. I'm, I'm, I was watching the cats off Soul Train. And my style comes from a combination of things. It comes from, I started off doing martial arts. My thing was going to be martial arts. I wasn't going to do dancing. But then I started seeing how the correlation is going together. And it was a TV show in Detroit. Like, remember we used to have, uh, like, the horror movies that come on Saturday? Yeah. Other than the... Okay. El they had a TV Vira. show in Detroit. Right. Elvira, uh, Son of Sven Gulli, Sven Gulli, all that. Okay. They had a cat in Detroit. His name was uh, Sir Graves Gasly. And Sir Graves Gasly had um, this marionette. It was a skeleton. And it was bouncing around. I'm like... I was already into dancing because I got a I had a dance show in Detroit called The Scene. I was already dancing. But then I saw that, and it was a bunch of dancers here that influenced me from the tap to the JIT to the GQ Esquire to the Earl Flynn. And a lot of these dancers are gang dancers. Like the, it, it, so I just was mixing them all. And it was so many guys there was so bad. It was just most of the guys that was awesome with dancing was gangsters. So a lot of my friends was gangsters, real gangsters, you know, and they were one man gangsters. You know, I'm like, but then when I decided to come out here, it was right before the crack epidemic ha hit and I'm working at the pizza part to start going to Venice. And the first person I battled when I got out here was Yamo. You remember Yamo? Ooh, uh, Royal Flush. No, not Royal Flush. Uh, uh, Dr. Confederate. Who, not Dr. Who and them. The Confederates. The Confederate pop yeah. was that motherfucker, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to give him his props. Some of my style I took from there when I got out here. It's because basically what I what I used on him was the splits, the matrix, and the alien. But that smooth style that they was using, I thought it was absolutely magnificent. I just couldn't fucking take it. I said, I'm, I'm going to have to take some of that. I just have to. I, so I ain't never told nobody that. That's some new shit for, for, uh, for every year. Because I don't really dance like nobody else. So you were, really. saying, you were saying Yamo from the Confederates had a big uh, inspiration on you? He had, he most certainly had an inspiration because we battled. But that style he was using, I was like, nah, that's some bad shit. And when something bad, you got to give it up to yourself and recognize it for yourself. When something's mm -hmm. dope, you got to go, nah, fuck the ego. That's bad. I got to have that technique. So I added it in. I didn't copy it. I just added it, certain elements of it in. I just thought it was too isometrical. It's like it's it, it's almost like if Tut if if Tuts had circles, they were doing it. Tuts don't have circles. They all have angles. <laughs> that shit was dope. Man, that's crazy. So, hey, hey, hey burst rod. Yo, yo. What year, what year was it when you first started getting down? Um. I mean, dancing for first started popping was like in the mid '80s, but taking it seriously was like '93, '94. When I yeah. took it seriously, I was about 13, 14 years old when I took it serious. Like started battling all kinds how, of. How that. old are you now, Burst? I'm 41. 41. Yeah. Wow. 41. So I've been doing it for quite a while now. You know what I mean? But that's when I started like taking it serious. But, uh, who, but part who, who inspired you? I had a I had a cousin. I had a cousin named Joe. Joe Ramos, uh, he's uh, he's actually a he's from a uh, Tulare, like the Bay Area, like Fresno area. Yeah, he's from actually there, but he had a, a similar, a different style from dancing. You know, what I mean, he, he wasn't pop locking because you know the Bay they do they do the, they do the whole boogaloo style. He was a pop locker, bro. He's doing like the Joker laugh, the Grandma walk. You know, he was a character. You know, he brought a lot of character to his popping. So that's the one that really got me into it. You know, and ever since then, I just kind of float from there. I just kind of kept going kept going and then i came across uh an old radiotron tape years later and i started seeing like mr Ree, chuko animation uh i seen the flat tops when i went to the boardwalk you know i started seeing a lot of cats that i really got to see before you know but mainly the people that really got me going was like family members that were dancing already that's who, who right. i can say my ogs because i saw them break dancing in the living room you know what I mean? Popping up at, at parties, things like that. You feel me? But I didn't really clean up my style till I started seeing, you know, the, the, the dope ones, the really, really dope ones. Like, oh, hell yeah, these fools were really killing it back in the day. You know? So that's that's my story. That's my claim. You, so you say you remember seeing me at How the West Was Won? 
for the first I, time. But I remember now. I remember the homeland incident because I remember because I remember you were dicky down just like I was. Yeah, that's why right. I was, like your style because you we dressed very similar. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. How the West was one. You had a whole camp with you, and I remember telling Warlock, "Yo, I met that cat at Homeland." So I remember the whole conversation because you walked in the house how the West was one with like three or four other cats and they were our dicky down just like Warlock and I used to be. You know what I'm saying? So that's now that was, that, that, you at probably, the, was that at the Jane Fonda or the Henry Fonda theater? Yeah, the, the, that was up in uh, Hollywood. Yeah. It was a, it was a second how the West was one I think they brought it. You know who that was that was with me? Who was it? That was Dub C. Dub C was with oh, you? Wow. Was Dub C and DJ Crazy Tunes. Oh shit. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I and I know Dove. See, I don't. I'm surprised I didn't recognize him. You talking about this the event when you walk in the red carpet and they was interviewing people, right? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, maybe I don't remember that. In but Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Was okay. Was Dog and all them there? Yeah, everybody was there. Yeah. That's when they all that boogaloo and and pop locking issues were going on. Slick right. Dog was pop off like sugar pop. Yeah. Was there. Yeah. 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 I remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. First, I got a question for you. Bert. You getting old, homeboy? <laughs> hey, I don't remember this year, but I want you to tell me. I want to hear your version of how it went down at the B-Boy Summit uh, 2010. It was 10 because I was there. With the whole, when Chris Brown was there? Yeah, when yeah. Chris Brown was there. Yeah. The whole, the whole. Hey. The whole hey, I had the music playing. I, I, had a, I had a clothing booth right there, and I was selling shirts. And I'm the one that had the music going on in the lobby. But I remember, I remember, the I remember chaos. you motherfuckers right there. You guys jumping it off. <laughs> I remember you guys jumping it off. Yeah. And they just got a little wild in the front. And before you knew it, there was, like, sides being taken. Everybody. You know, we was, yeah, 20 bulls were behind you guys. And then it was, like, MGF and uh, all the other cats are uh, uh, behind, like, uh, like the who was Chris Brown with the uh, fuck? What was that guy's name? The one with the afro. I can't remember. Chris Brown was a youngster too, though back then. Ah yeah. oh, man, what was John his name? Rose, you was there. Yeah, I made it to the finals of that B boy song. Oh, you was so, in the contest. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But, uh, but yeah. Mary Poppins took it, huh? Yeah. Now, how yeah. How y'all feel about that, homie? Keep it real. We on pop pop lock talk right now. Keep it real on that shit. How y'all feel about that? I mean, well, I, I mean, I, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, go ahead. I remember being. Was there? No, no, I heard about it. I wasn't there. Okay. I wasn't there because I heard about it right afterwards because I was going to go. I was doing something else, but I definitely heard about it. And I go ahead. I let's go ahead because of what what I no, think. I think Mary Poppins is a lot doper than she get credit for. No, no, and here's the thing. I what I, I to be honest, I don't even remember much other than at the time I was rolling with with G-Style at that time, so the tension was so okay. thick, you know what I mean? Right. Like, it was back then, that. like, just for being affiliated with Slick, I can lose a contest. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Just because, like, motherfuckers don't uh, like it. and, like, so it ain't even about the style, it's just like... You seeing him telling the truth? You yeah. hear him telling the truth? He telling the truth! Yeah, he it telling was the truth. I didn't, I didn't know you went that far back, homie. Yeah, I was there. I was there because you and KML. Yeah. KML was the one popping off in the uh in the in the B Boy Summit lobby when it was uh was you out there, cool boy with uh, with your homies. But in the, as far as the competition goes, I forget who was judging, but I just remember like a lot of them were it was like slick and then maybe two others that were affiliated with the E B camp at that time. And at that time, if you was affiliated with G Style, nobody in that camp fuck was with gonna you. win. Yeah, it just didn't. It just didn't work. So I just entered it strictly because Slick was judging. I was like, "Well, I might have a fair shot of doing all right if if he's one of the judges." And so that's what I did. But either way, it was it was still a cool, you know, it was still a cool experience and and, and was and was fun. Long Beach fighting. What's up, Pierre? Pop and Pierre. What's up, Pierre? Hey, what's happening? What's happening? What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> hey, we on that LBC time, y'all. We have been online for about thirty minutes having pop lock talk. Here come the hey, here come the Long Beach Riders coming in. What do you feel like? LBC. Drinks, drinks, drinks. Pop and Pierre, man. We having some good conversation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got 
You got Burst Rock. You got John Bugs. You got the OG Ruben Hall flat top in flat the building, top. man. Yeah, yeah. What up, Pierre? What up, homie? How y'all doing? Good, good. How you doing, brother? Respect. Much oh, love hey, respect. I was going to ask y'all a question. I was going to ask y'all a question. Okay. Now, do you remember a guy? He's from Arizona. His name is Wizard. Yeah, he's from my crew. Yeah. Yeah, Wizard's from my crew. Wizard, Wizard was not getting the respect he deserved. But, but I think he went back and forth. But it, even when he was bigger, he was ridiculously bad. Yeah. But I, I just wanted to mention Wizard and shout out to you, Wizard. Bad I, like, I like Wizard. I like Wizard because he liked to fight. Yeah, Wizard, hey, Wizard, <laughs> Wizard a gangster, bro. <laughs> hey, that was dope. Hey, 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 that was gangster. gangster. I had to stop Wizard at one of the, um, one of the Papa's picnic up in the bathroom. I had to go in there. It was just me and him and somebody else. I had to stop him. Nobody know that. Wizard was like, let's take you to the bathroom, homie. <laughs> Wizard. Yeah, Wizard, hey, Wizard, G, hey. Hey, and he got hands. Hey. Let me tell you, Wiz got some hands, bro. He's yeah. fast. Hey. Big guy. I I I seen him put hands on a couple people. <laughs> What's up, Pierre? Hey. What's up, Pierre? Hey, we had we had a wizard too. His name was Big Deuce. Rest in peace. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. By wizard? No, I'm I'm saying we had a wizard too. Oh, you know? oh he's just saying he got a wild one like, like that. Like the fight, oh, like the fight. Yeah, yeah. Dude, hey, hey, speaking of that, Pierre, let's let you let's let you chop it up for a minute, man. Uh, tell us the the history between you and Big Deuce, man. Let them know. Oh shit! First, Fred. first, first, explain to everybody who Big Deuce is, because you gotta remember. I mean, we know, but our viewers that's gonna be watching this may not know. And then go ahead and tell us the, you know, the connection you have with Big Deuce. Okay, Fred. Hey, um, well, first of all, Deuce was um originally from L.A. I'm not sure what um what 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 group he was from, but uh, I I I got I got I got Fred here with me, so. He, they actually about it. Let me, let me turn off my Bluetooth so he can hear this to him. Turn it off. Can y'all hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Fred, y'all know y'all know Slim, OG Big Fred. What's, what's going on, Fred? What's up? What's up? What's happening? Pop locking with you, man. Welcome to Pop Lock Talk. What's going on? What's going on? That's what's up. Okay, That's what's up. okay. ask because Deuce was with them before he was with us. Go ahead, ask the question again. Okay, so the question was actually directed to Pop and Pierre. I told him to please express to everybody, man, who Big Deuce was and who he was to Pop and Pierre. But now the question is directed to you. Please tell uh, everybody who Big Deuce was and who he was to you. And how he came to our group. All right, all right. <laughs> Deuce, Big Deuce. Was from East Coast Crip, Six Deuce. Gang banging. Gang banging hard. 100%. Okay. Came to Long Beach and he met us and he loved us. It, he, loved, he, loved, he loved being around us so much that he was willing to drop everything that he was doing with the gang banging to be around us. Yeah. You know, and he just wanted to be a part of the group. We looked at him like, you the bad one of the baddest cats we ever seen. He looked at us like we well, the best cat that he had ever seen. See, Deuce was bopping when Deuce came to Long Beach. Yeah. We that's the first time we ever seen bopping. We heard of bopping Andre, but we never seen him before. But Deuce came to Long Beach and brung the bopping style. Yeah, he was bopping. He was bopping. He was bopping. Robotron. We was popping. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. For our viewers, what year was that? Because this can start a lot of history right here, a lot of mess and controversy. Mm -hmm. What year was that? I was in junior high school, going to Washington Junior High School. Who stayed on the block of the junior high school? Deuce was a lot older. Deuce probably was a flat top age. Oh man, Deuce was like probably flat top age. Yeah, he had a older. He had he had he had a girlfriend. I think it might be older than me because I I wasn't here yet when that went down. I wasn't even in LA yet. Right, well, I mean, since Deuce was older than us. We was like 13, 14. Deuce came out to Long Beach. He was like 21. He's a grown man. He was older than that, man. <laughs> he was older than that, you know. And, and you know, he, he was a real, he, he was a cold dancer, man. And we just really looked at him like he was something special. But he looked at it the same way. And I think that was a chemistry right there. So, you know, whatever we needed to do, he would do it. Sometimes he wouldn't have the money because he had responsibilities as, a, as an adult. You know, but uh, even though we was teenagers, we would scrape up the dough sometimes, get them shoes that they need and do the things they need to do. But Deuce, man, 
when it came to pop locking, that was his love. And when it came to us, we was his love. No, no brothers. Dude, no brothers. I mean, like, for real, man. For real. Like, we got we got some things going on right now. About five, six years ago, the baby group sat us down and uh, uh, invited us to a park to sit down and said, hey, you know, uh, well, we really appreciate you guys, you know, uh, for uh, showing us how to be men, you know, and we feel like the men that we are today, is you guys are responsible for it. So we want to do something for you. We want to do uh, uh, a documentary. You know, and we're going to take care of it. We're going to pay for everything, you know. And to me, that right there is everything to me because that's our legacy. When I'm dead and gone, I want to make sure that people remember us. Deuce, Deuce started shedding tears. This is how much he loved. Is it going? Uh, where we at? Where we at? We still there? That's how much he loved us. He shed tears, man. And he told everybody there, right and cared about him. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of cat he was. You know, he had a big heart. But I'm gonna tell you something. When we go, when we moving through, and we pop locking, and we doing our thing in LA and going different places, and he get around them gangbangers, he's stepping in front of all of us. His chest is coming out, his head is going high, and he's moving the way he used to move. Yeah. And he wish a nigga would. That's yep. Deuce. He wouldn't let nobody touch us. He wish a nigga would. These these new pop lockers say when they touch you or or push you or or, or grab your shirt or grab your hat or flip your head off. No, nah, that's disrespect. We yeah. you. Not test. That's right total test. disrespect. Hey, friend, Pop, yeah. Yeah. Matter, matter of fact, everybody, man, what I did on my last couple of shows, anytime man, we talk about one of the homies that is rest in peace, we all bow our heads, man, and take a moment of silence for five seconds and pay homage and love, some Pop Lock love to him. So let's do that for me for one second for Big Deuce. <laughs> Big Deuce. Right. Pop Lock love. Yes, hey, I, got, yeah. I got a crazy, I got a crazy story about Big Deuce. You know what I'm Come saying? On, share it. Share like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna explain it because, like, everybody, it's crazy how God works. Everybody in this screen, I'm connected with it in some crazy way through the dance, right? So, like, obviously, burst rock because I used to rock with Frantic, and then when I first came out to LA, and you know, burst rock's connection with Frantic, flat top, he know. When I first got to L.A., I didn't want to get a regular job. So I was hitting on Santa Monica uh, Promenade. I was hitting out at Venice. I was hitting out at uh, Hollywood sometimes. So it was like, and it's rest in peace animation because animation taught me how to get money on the street. You know what I'm saying? He was the one who really taught me how to crowd control. Yeah, he that money too, boy. Yeah, yeah. He, he, and, and animation was showing so much love. His shows were longer than ours. Ours were like 20 minutes. Sometimes animation would go for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes or something like that. So sometimes he would be like, yo, exactly. You already know, Flat Top. And he would be like, Boog, Boog, you go do two shows. Do two shows? Because when I do mine, I'm going to get into my shit. When animation do his shit, you ain't getting no crowd. That's just the way it go. You know what I mean? Because he going to draw the crowd. But like, you know, like watching Flat Top, watching animation... (laughs) You know what I'm saying? When I first got out to L.A., at least in my generation, I'm not talking y'all generation, but my generation of poppers, I was out there putting in work on the street more than some of the newer poppers in my generation in L.A. were actually doing. Like, I made my whole living. I was living with five niggas in a one bedroom for like five years. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, no, I, I, I can attest to that. I can attest. He, he was definitely out there. Yeah, and we yeah I'll sign that. I'll sign it. Yep. So then I went to the <laughs> yep. picnic. To be honest, I didn't even want to go to the poppers picnic because that was a day to go make money. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, but I was like, That's I gotta exactly go. How we think. Yeah, I was like, That's I gotta how go. We think. Yeah, I gotta go to the picnic because I just want to see all these legends. And it was the it was the year I'll never forget. I came out there and I had like a Miami style t shirt on. I'll never forget Big Deuce come up to me after seeing me hit the cypress. He goes, Nigga, they pop lock in Miami, nigga. And I was like, <laughs> like that's that's the first th- that's the first thing he said to me. He goes, nigga, they pop lock in Miami. I'm like, yeah. He like, man, you hard than a motherfucker. You know what I mean? And like, it just you gotta understand, like, just moving there, getting respect from a real G. You know what I'm saying? Like a right, real one. Right. And I could tell Deuce was a real one, both in the popping game and as a man. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and, and, and the but, game bang. Right. Yeah. yeah. So for, for him to to recognize where I was coming from, like, you could tell he saw, like, the spirit I approached the dance right. with, not right. just like, oh, this nigga's tight. He know that, like, this is my life, nigga, I live it, you know, 20, real, 20 real, real, real. Yeah. Real, real, real. 
And so that was a inspiration. And Deuce was always like, you know, there's, you know, and, and you got to think too, and this, and, and I'm just calling a spade a spade. It, 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 popping is global now. You know what I'm saying? It's everywhere. But at the same time, I remember coming from the South, and this, this is no thing. I'm just telling you what it was. Where I came from, the popping community was predominantly black. When I came to LA, it was a lot of Asians. You know what I mean? Like it, it was just, it wasn't as many blacks, my generation, doing right. it as much as I thought it was going. So Deuce kind of also approached me on a level like, yo, I'm happy to see young African Americans picking up the dance and, and still doing it full right. throttle. Cause you know, I think if he was surprised to see like, I mean, if you think it was like me, Slim Boogie, I'm trying to think like in LA, like there's like, at that time, it may have been like right, five right. of us, you know what I mean, in right. comparison to the whole, you know, and that's not a knock. It's for everybody. The dance is for everybody. I'm just saying, I think he also connected with me on a on a black level as well. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I, like, I, I want to say one thing. I want to say one thing. I'm going to get ready to take off in a minute. Uh, may the look first. God bless all y'all. May he fortify and keep y'all strong. May he keep you focused. First, keep getting down. Keep handling like a like a general, like an emperor is supposed to. Cool boy, you're doing an excellent job bringing people together. And I want to say this one thing. We need to start taking us that are here now and creating content. This is, this is part of it. But we need our own movies. We need our own comedies. We need to create for us. Yeah. So our kids, I know we did it. And we got to put our put our, our differences to the side if we got any. Uh, I say this again, Slick Dog, if you're game to do some music together, we can. Same thing with you, cool boy. I'm game. I'm telling you again. It's my third time, dog. Telling you that. But anyway, <laughs> my third time. <laughs> third time. <laughs> but I don't know. I got you. Third time. I hear you. No, I'm, just saying, no, not you. I'm talking about Slick. Oh, this is my third time telling him. I'm game to do. I'm, but I, we need to do. We need to do music, content, comedy. We need to have our world where it's coming from us because they keep using other people to represent us. That ain't us. And we. That's and right. I know I'm sick of it. Welcome to sick of it. Are you sick of it yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, talk. We need to talk, talk. It. Yeah. All I'm gonna say is I'm on a mission, homie. I'm on a mission. I already know you are. I know you are. The reason why I'm saying that John Boogs is making noise, Burst making noise. We need to we need to come together. And even if we create small stories, they ain't got to be that big. Thirty minutes or whatever the case, we need to get them done while we here. While we here, because mm -hmm. we can't right. do shit when we ain't here. Yeah. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? No, nah, big fact. That's You're a right. different plan. You're right, man. No, it's, it's shifting though. It's it's shifting though. Um, trust me. Like I'm moving more silently, but when I say I got some shit. That's gonna change the whole game coming for for popping. Gonna change the whole game. I just been moving quietly because it's a lot of people out here that don't want to see you. Shine. And you keep moving. Um, but what Flat Top is talking about is unity. Us exactly. Coming together and keeping the and that's the purpose of us having this conversation, man. Because I want yeah. the world to see what we got going on. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't know. They don't know that the pop locker right. got a life. You know what I'm saying? You know. Right. And we also gotta got acknowledge. John well, Lewis, your story is incredible. You got a dope story, man. You come all the way from across states, and you over here in the West, pop locking with us, homie. And it's hard to get rankings over here with us, homie. First of all, we yeah, meet on this side. You know what I'm saying? We ain't even just letting yeah. anybody come get out with us, homie. You know, yeah. from Pierre and then in Long Beach, they gonna whoop your ass if you get out here and you weak. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. You, yeah. you know, Burst Rock and LA Funny Bones crew, you can't just come on their turf. They not having it. So, for you to come down and do what you're doing and get ranking like that, man, that's dope as hell, homie. Not so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. And, and before I take off, I want to say one thing. I'm going to get on out of here. I want to say something uh, about the Booyah tribe and all the other different uh, groups of people who have been putting it down as long as we have. Mm -hmm. I, want you to know, I want them to know, and I'm, I'm talking about all of us, we've we got to recognize that this is we've created something that ain't nobody else has ever done. And mm -hmm. it's having an effect on the whole world. And people are getting super rich off us. Right. Yeah. Yes, they okay? are. And it's time for us to do some eating. I don't want no leftovers. You know what? Right. We need to stop sharing our stories for free. That's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's, that's part exactly right what here. I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Because we're eager to tell it because we want it to get out. But we that's why we need to start creating. 
We yeah. we are the directors, so, the designers, so, the so grips. All we the are producers the out there that keep coming up to us, and all you writers and executive producers, fuck you unless you got the <laughs> right money, the right contracts. And I wish Shabadoo was here because he wouldn't let us. You know, he wouldn't let no bullshit go down. That's one man right there, homie, that knew that when it comes to business. Yeah. Cause he been in it so long, he know his shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? He knew his shit. So right. rest in peace. Hey, like I said before, man, five seconds. Let's get, let's let's bow our heads for Shabbat two real quick. Right. Oh yeah, that's the brand. That's the brand. One. Right, right, right. Right. But like I was right. saying, man. Yeah, that's the brand. And yeah, John he Bush, gave me John Bush, his, his folks was down here, man, for my pop locking battle, and he passed out a few of those. Uh, items and brands and stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah uh, he, hey, I want y'all all to know my next battle is January 22nd. I'm going to give away $1,000 again. I may even have a legendary OG pop locking battle that day for just the OGs. But um, we got to bring it to an end, y'all. I got to give a big shout out. Much love to John Bugs. You keep you carrying the torch, man. Keep pushing it. Much love to my homie Burst Rock. We've been yes. homeboys for a long time. But Burst Rock, we got to start low riding together too, homie. Let's do it. You gotta start riding together. Flat top, you always there when I need you, homie. You like that big brother that got my back. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'm I'm, I'm glad you gave me a call. I'm glad I was able to be here. We got work to do. Pop and Pierre, we gotta keep that example, man. We gotta keep that example going to all the other Crips and Bloods to come together. We gotta keep that going so we can stay stay together in unity, homie. You know what I'm saying? It's one. You know, so all the other bullshit can stop. And let them know that's what pop locking was for. It, it, it seized all that bullshit, homie. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So me and you are that example. You know, so hey, y'all, I appreciate all y'all time, homie. We're going to have some more of these. I'm going to post these up on YouTube. Pop lock love to all y'all, homie. Pop lock talk. Hey, cool much. boy. Hey, cool boy. Can nice I say one more thing before you go? Can I say one more thing before you go, man? Deuce was a perfect example of what I'm talk- what you're talking about right now. Yes, he what was. you're talking about doing. Because he loved pop locking so much, he's willing to give up all that other stuff. Man. He suppressed that because he wanted to be around us. He, we love it was our love. It's just what we did. We loved to dance. And I'm gonna tell you something else. He brought pop a uh, bop into Long Beach. I never saw Bob before yeah. before he came here. I'm glad he brought it here. That. He taught us how to bop. It's a part of us. It's part of our DNA. That's but he why brought we have this show. See, that's documented right now. What you just said is documented right here because everybody's gonna see this shit. Dudes. Brought bopping to Long Beach. That's huge. Homie. That's right. Never even seen it or heard of it until he came. I was in junior That's high huge. school. I watched in junior high yeah. school. About 14. Yeah. 13, 14. <clears throat> Dope. Yeah. Dope. And he taught me. He taught me specifically. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Specifically. Man, me and Deuce had a lot of phone conversations, man. And he showed me a lot of love, on me. He didn't give a fuck about that bullshit, that game banging shit. No, no, he, he came to me. He used to tell me, to he used to guy. tell me, cool boy, he reminded me of your of his brother. I never met his brother. But he said, man, he right. reminded me of my brother. His brother, his brother said, he said his brother had a pop lock tatted on him. He said the both of y'all the same with that shit. He just showed me a lot of love, homie. Yeah. Yeah. That's who he was, cool boy. That's who he was, man. For real, man. I miss that brother. You you guys have no idea, man. Yeah. The love uh, that he had for me is why I feel the way that I do. Yeah. Because you don't get that from everybody. Throughout life, you might love a, a whole lot of people, but they're not going to love you the same. This yeah. shit was overflowing. Yeah, that's right. This group, Long Beach time, man, is starting. Get ready to take off, y'all. Long Beach, man. Wait, wait, flat top. Before you leave, wait, wait. John Bush, throw away. Let his burst rock hit it. Then let, let flat top hit it. I'm going to hit it. Then. Wow, it was. Uh, you're going your turn, cool boy. No, it was your, your turn. We got to start it over. Go, it's, flat top. Because you know, start, start, you start got, it over, John Bush. You, <laughs> Get it again. Everyone, there you go. Wow, wow, wow. There you go. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we out. Pop Lock Love. Oh, yeah. What's Pop Lock, y'all? If you have not subscribed to Cool Boys Boxing Cap and Dance Academy, man, push that button. Come on. Push that button and subscribe. That way we may be able to send you an email and bring you on our show. Pop lock talk. This show, man, is you know to let everybody know that you know you got the rap industry, you got the hip hop industry, you got the acting industry. Well, there's a such thing now as the pop lock industry, and this is where we talk about it right here. Cool boy sponsoring Captain Dance Academy. Booyah! <laughs>